welcome to Man's Talk. I am Tammy Garthwaite. Hi guys, I'm Carla Garrick. <sighs> and here we are one day post primary. Um, in Manchester and yeah. across the state. Yeah. There was a lot of primaries. I was trying to be, you know, I always try to be a little objective. I like to look at the numbers. You know, after you do this year after year after year, you do start to dig into the numbers, if, especially if you're a spreadsheet kind of geek, which I am. Um, <laughs> I am not. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I don't think I was surprised by anything yesterday. Were you? Was there any surprise? No, I mean, I was disappointed in the right. Emily Phillips yeah. race, but I honestly, no, not no, for the most nothing part. Nothing that I went, holy cow. So I will tell you this. And I, and honestly, I did think the Chuck Kelly race was a little wider than I was expecting. That ended up being like 70-30. No, it actually, I think, closed up a bit. So oh, I, did it? So I okay. tried to print, and there are, you know, a lot of this, I think what it is is the North Country is not yet. In because <laughs> they're everything some they're district sending desperately sending smoke signals from Dixfield yeah, Notch no, right <laughs> um for instance the Senate District 23 Emily's race that's 100% reported because that's just a handful of towns but those right. are not in the North Country um everywhere else is like 94% 95% so it's close but there's obviously some small pockets that have not reported. And this was as of about an hour ago. So it's, I mean, the, not, the results are not gonna change. I was just looking at numbers. Um, so really on the Republican side, what we saw is we, uh, Kelly Ayotte is the, uh, the governor's, governor's nom nominee. And she ended up in this number, granted an hour ago, at 95% of the towns in, 63.43 um, to okay. 34. So it was a two third, one third. Yeah, so That's not a decent uh, that, showing. Right, I mean, it, I, mean, I would, have. Yeah, I, I personally voted for Chuck Morris, but I've also been saying for the last, I don't know, nine months, I do not care which Republican is sitting in the corner office as long as a Republican is sitting in the corner office. And I had that conversation yesterday with somebody who was not a fan of Kelly A.I. And I said, don't have to be. You have to, you as a Republican need to get a Republican sitting in. And she's like, well, I don't really know. And I go, no, no, no. Oh, no, there this is, is a world of difference between a Kelly and a Joyce right. Craig. And I said that, I said, neither of, of, I said, here's the reality. This isn't a, I said, first of all, the governor doesn't actually pass, they don't actually j create legislation or pass legislation. They sign legislation and they veto legislation. So if you have a Joyce Craig sitting in the office, you can forget expanding any school choice. You can forget on expanding any sort of um, voter integrity. Like all these different things, you can have 40 plus Republican majority and you're not gonna be able to override those vetoes. And this person just who was running up for office did not really had not really thought about it. And I said, no, I'm serious. So this I think people sometimes get blinded by principle and I get it. And I that too, is actually why I enjoy the primary process, right? Because the primary process you is can kind vote. of more where you vote yes. according to your principles. Yes. So, you know, I, I definitely will support Kelly. I mean, she's yeah. not the greatest. She's but she's better worst, than Joyce but, Craig. But she's way better than Joyce. <laughs> Joyce and, and, you know, and Joyce Craig has to run on her record. Yeah. And her record is Manchester. Yeah. And it's not great. I kind of so, thought in that. Fact, it's kind of awful. I, I kind of <laughs> thought Cindy was going to eke, eke it out. Me and too. I thought it would be really close, like within a point. And, what um, was the final? At, again, at 95% reporting, um, Joyce Craig 48, Cindy Warmington 42. So that's a bigger gap than uh, I would have thought. I mean, within five, no, but, six points. But still, it's, it's, it's a, and I don't know how Joyce Craig survives. I, honestly, a, 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 can you I, imagine I think the ads? It is, oh, no, she's not going to. You know, I, I, I genuinely, first of all, I don't really like the, the prime nastiness. I don't either. See, but, right? And I don't even think they but have to be nasty. sometimes I go to, like, on Twitter, I see on X, I see, like, uh, her, her post something, and, and then, then just the vitriol of here. Manchkins I, uh, just she being like, oh, this Joyce, woman cannot run she, the, the, the She state. posted a picture, and it was her, because I was like, well, maybe somebody else is just, no, nope. Joyce Craig for governor posted a picture of herself with somebody at like the car show a couple weeks ago. Okay, when, yep. The vitriol. There were like, <laughs> and so then I started scrolling because I'm like, well, geez, maybe it's just the first couple. But, no, there were yeah. like 300 comments and all but maybe four of them were like, go away. You are the worst thing that ever happened to this Manchester. You'll destroy our state. And I was like, okay, that's a lot of... <laughs> A lot of Joyce hating. Right. So, uh, so you know, but that's what the Democrats picked. Um, 
so and nice. so and and I think I mean she really just does get the benefit of name recognition. That's right? like that, that probably that, helped know, her. Is is just you know she was known. It's in the biggest yep. city. You know she's yep. She well, was mayor for a while. Speaking of so, so agreed with the biggest city. So well, as we were watching the results. I did early, early on, and this was like the first little number. When I first clicked to see who was doing what um, early, 8, 15, 8 o'clock, Joe Lavasser was, run, was leading. <laughs> and I was like, what? And I mean, and it was like a lead by like two or three percentage points, and I was just like, what? Well, I, I mean, I just, it wasn't that I was, was horrified or anything. I just... It completely, it was, at that he point, it was, Le, it was Lavasser, Holly, and oh. then Prescott. And I was like, what? But then I realized, oh, that's because it's 8 o'clock and Manchester's done. Oh. I was oh, like, oh, okay. It, this is, because he, he's going to, I'm sure when we get the numbers, he's going to have done the best in Manchester. So, uh, it's, I don't know if it's still too close to cold. No, but it, that I was, was this morning. But I, I was laughing this the morning pictures. because the picture, I didn't have my glasses like, on. This? And I was like, honestly, I looked at it. And so, and the last photo is Joe Kelly. And <laughs> this is all due respect to Joe. And I was like, who is that lady with the shade? It's a strange picture. <laughs> So uh, maybe, you know, talk yeah. to the union leader and get a better um, headshot on record. But yes, well, that was just funny. And then when I went back and checked, Holly had, you know, it, but he, I'll tell you, I mean, it at this point, considering this, I don't know that Joe did any mail. I know he had signs everywhere. I drive back and forth to Wakefield through various towns. We have this conversation all the time. I go through, depending on what I, my task list is for the day, I either go out through Deerfield and uh, Candia and, I don't know, some other town up that way. Or if I have to go to Concord, I go to Concord, and then I go through Barnstead and over this way, and then I have, if I'm doing this, I end up cutting through Alton. So I see, a, I mean, I don't see the, the western part of the state, but I see a good chunk of stuff. And we were talking, and Joe did have a lot of signs in a lot of places. It, we were like, oh, you got to give him credit. He's got signs across the state. Um, that being said, people over there I talked to at a fundraiser had said they had no idea who he was, which I was like, okay, whatever. There's but more I, than, yeah, I okay. That's just so, how it is. Um, <laughs> so that was the thing. And uh, the other, the reason we were talking about signs is somebody was talking about uh, Kamala signs. And I said, yeah. Somebody goes, well, you know, I think it's one third truthers. I said, I'm going to tell you that between here and my house in Wakefield, there are endless Trump signs. And these people, when J.D. Vance got picked, boom, they had new signs. These people are on top of their sign right. deal, right? And these are big signs and these are flags and everywhere. I can sincerely say I maybe have seen six Kamala signs in my tra travels compared to, I don't know, a hundred Trump signs. Like, I realize I'm going more rural, but it just, it is not like there is a strong, um, there is not a strong showing out there on the roads for Kamala at this point. That being said, back to Joe. So he's at like 14, say 14.8, right? Um, and he got 14.797 as of this, this report. Russell Prescott only had 16.9. So that's, you okay. know, 2,100 votes considering you did not spend tens of thousands of dollars on mail and you got into the race late and, you know, you pretty much just went with I'm the Trump guy. Right. You come pretty darn close. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't mean, know. He's... I know you poll stood yesterday for Victoria. I was out helping Emily yep. in one, you know, her yep. big district, and it's always interesting to talk to either the voters. I think we were at a pretty casual uh, moderator, Newton. Yeah, okay. Uh, you know, because they let us stand right by the door, yeah. you know, and we were talking to people and people asked questions and whatever. I was like, hmm, it seems borderline, but sure, until sure. somebody yells at me, I'll keep going. And it was interesting to see the kinds of questions, right? Like one I consistently heard is, is, is X a Trump person? Right, just direct, right. And, and you're like, oh, it's hard to uh, tell. Like, Are I don't you know for what I'm him or against answer. him? Yeah. You know, I mean, I obviously answered honestly, uh, right. but. But uh, but I thought, wow, that's kind of like, you know, people are really coming in hot yep. with that. Yep. Um, and I agree. I've been all over the state. I've been in the North Country a lot working, and uh, I see a lot of Trump support yep. up there, too. And I, 
I mean, I do see some Harrison Walt signs. And what's with the messaging? We're not going back. I'm like, I, who, who's making? Who's getting paid for this stuff? Because so much of the stuff well, just is so weird. I mean, it's we like they have to say that? things uh, without saying things. So I mean, I will say this. I, I really do feel Emily lost her race. Yeah, it was. Um, I mean. I'm not diminishing her race at all because I do know that um, the Senate PAC spent a lot of money I mean, they against spent, her. Uh, probably between eighty and a hundred thousand right. dollars. Um, she did get thirty-three percent of the vote, so okay. she got a third. So you know, I mean, I think you know, for a first time running yep. in a massive district where the Senate PAC, yep, where all good, yeah, good bills go to yeah. die. Infer what you want over there. Uh, spent all this money, but honestly, it was pretty ugly. So one of the it things was, they was actually did yesterday, so they, someone put out a mailer to all the union people in the district and told them to go vote for Bill Gannon, who voted for right to work legislation. Huh. So they weaponized the unions to vote against the candidate but, but by, the candidate, but the they, candidate were they were voting for actually also was, pro was rights work. like had already had actually had a track record of already screwing them over. So it's kind of like wow. So I wonder, I'd be curious. Kind of like, well, really, I'm curious if we're if, if that was for the. I'd be curious to see. Who I don't know if it was up. a Senate pack. Right. I said it was a pack, right? right? Because now we're at the stage where we don't know who is doing what because you know uh, of this decision that corporations are people and they can well, do first you amendment still, stuff. But, but they still have to, if you're, you still have to say who's paying for political mail. Yes. Even if you're a corporation, even if you're a PAC. So right, it, but it'll come out two weeks right, after. The, right. The, the, no, I understand. The, I'm just saying. You know, so, and then the other ugly one they did is, you know, she was a frontline proponent of medical freedom. Yep. My body, my choice. Remember that, you know? Um, she was anti-masking, yep. and they put out a mailer because she, she had voted yeah. for the plastic screens. Because she wanted the kids, because kids wanted back the, in school. The kids to go back to school. So it was a very specific part of a right. bill. And so they put out a mailer where they were like, and she's a And I don't even think masker. it was a bill. I just think it was her town wanted it, to uh, get the yeah, kids back like in school. So she something. voted like, yeah, I want that. So that kind of politics, right, where the Republicans... Mm the party that's supposed to be moral and ethical and honest and all of those things. When you play politics like that, I'm just going to say yeah. there are a lot of us, including me, who choose to be ethical, right? I know. And who choose do to do it the right way. But it's not to say, you know, some of us are collecting a lot so, of data in these primaries. Exactly. And, you know, well, and that's what And that's what I think the healthy choice to be. Like, I, I've seen some posts by some people and they're they're uh, bitter and trust me i know what it's like to lose right i've never had to lose in a primary so that's a special kind of pain um, <laughs> i almost lost in one primary because lou delisandra had all the independents pull pull ballots against um, me but you know it it stings and that's why the that's part of the reason why the gop's uh, unity breakfast isn't today because it's still stinging but <laughs> they are we'll they'll do a union steady. breakfast um, you know i i know that em, i believe that emily had bought at least one table and you know i do hope that she and everybody that's supported her and find it, funded her and whatnot you know do keep their eye on the the bigger picture. And I mean, oh, I think the bigger picture is perhaps we start a Senate watchdog you know, organization. I don't, I don't disagree. Or just maybe we keep a better eye on things and maybe, you know, like learn, live and learn from these things. I'm not, nothing is in vain. It's just, but I mean, we do have to remember that it's the Democrats that are the bad guys in this case and oh, pretty much all cases, but, um, and they have to keep the eye on the ball. That's why, you know, as painful sometimes as it is, and like you said, the principal part was in the primary. Now we have to make sure the print, the bigger principle, this principle of more freedom and more prosperity and, you know, more on our side and less of the craziness that's the Democrats spew. So our new, our new principles have, have to be broader. Well, I think it's just... Uh well, if they're principles, they're no. Just but you there, know what I mean. Right? Like but you start saying, "Okay, I believe X," but 
X plus two. Right. On I mean, side. now it's an issue if you want uh, if you want more communism, right. vote Democrats. That's what I mean. And if you don't want communism <laughs> exactly. and some kind of I don't know devil party at this stage, who knows what's right. up I don't there? Know. Then then I kind of feel like the choice is clear. Yes. And of course, here in New Hampshire, we know that the Republicans have consistently delivered a better quality of living, right? The the, the Democrats want to tax you to death. If they yep. get in, they will yep. introduce an income tax. It is definitely coming. Oh, yeah. uh, a, a, and a sales tax, right? Yep. And then All we'll the just taxes. become Connecticut. And I will tell you, I have so many clients coming from the other New England states who just realize whether they're in Massachusetts and they're being subjected to the, the millionaire's tax, yep. right? Like those people are fleeing. You've got people out of New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut who are just like, I am getting taxed to death. I would like to come to a state that actually respects the voters and respects right. our own money. Right. It's not the state's role to decide what you do with your no. money. Um, the only other race, which I know you'll be as happy, you're as happy as I am, was uh, in CD2, which is not Manchester. Um, so in case we didn't say it, the CD1 candidates are Chris Pappas, the incumbent, and, um, God, I'm drawing a blank here. Press, um, Stevens Prescott? I Russell remember. Prescott. Boy, Prescott, it's been yeah. a long day. <laughs> Russell Prescott for the Republicans. Um, Russell was a... Gosh, Russell was a state rep. Russell served on the executive council and is not running for Congress. Um, so in CD2. Oh, so how, do, how does he fit in? What do you mean? Like, is he a Sununu guy? Uh, like, is no, he I a, think he's, um, I, I would say I he's I mean, those are a lot of positions no, I don't to feel, not know his name. I don't, you know what I mean? Oh, I knew his name because I served in the House. I'm pretty sure I probably served with him. But he's also been, I mean, he was a, a state legislator for a long time. Um, and then served, then run for, ran for executive council and served there. And I don't remember why he stopped running for executive, like I don't remember. Did he run for Senate and lose? I don't know. Um, CD2, which is so gerrymandered, it is so funny. <laughs> so I have a house in Wakefield, which is north of Rochester, right? On the main border, so you can't go any further. You can't go any further east of New Hampshire. I am in CD1. Yes. Wolfboro yes. is in CD2. Yes. So Wolfboro is east of me. So that, like, and I was talking to a state representative, Katie Patton, all up there, and she goes, yeah, it doesn't matter. Now, if you go one town further than Wolfboro, it's CD1 again. Yeah, it's... It's, it's really is gerrymandering. Um, but anyways, in CD2, uh, Maggie Goodlander, oh which I goodness. knew... <laughs> no, we're no. going... Well, so my heads were from Not, Lily. Can we get to no, the No, but I'm just saying, <laughs> she, she wiped up the table with Colin. She got 64%. I thought that was really uh, interesting. But I, they said the debate with her between the two of them that, he, like, he, I read something choked, where they just yeah. said, like, just make it stop. It was so bad. <laughs> um, but on the Republican side, yay, Lily Tang Williams is the nominee, which is awesome. Um, she got about 36% of the vote, so she did fair, She did well. Um, Vikram, I'm not even going to tell you, Vikram got 27%, and then the other 4,000 candidates split the difference. Um, yeah, and so I think, you know, this is testament to several things. One is perseverance right yep. Lily moved here she has consistently run she runs a good clean campaign she yep. talks about the issues she's she a lot real story. grassroots volunteer campaign I yeah, don't believe, you know, I'm not even sure that she has a staff person uh, I, I don't think I don't so think or she maybe does. like a part-time right yep. she um, she goes to all the things she gets out there she asks for help yep. she fundraised yep. Uh, she has a great American dream story, yep. which is, you know, hey, I came from China. Please don't become communist. Right. You know, and I'm like, maybe, just maybe, instead of bashing all the immigrants, some of y'all should listen yep. to yep. us because we've all come from countries where things went pear-shaped and we are literally here yelling to be like, don't make this mistake, America. And so that's what I love about her is she has the passion, but she also has the, the, the actual knowledge and story to be like, I grew up under communism. Yep. It sucked. Please don't do Please it. Please don't here. do that. Yep. Um, so that was good. Um, I did do a number thing in my head and all of the candidates that Dan and I have 
invested in this year are still in the race. Nice. <laughs> it's a good feeling. Um, so I, my, this is this does not this is not scientific. This is just observation. So I think it's fair to say we had comparable primaries in both parties. We both had a governor's primary. We both had CD2 primary. Um, Chris Pappas didn't have a primary, so there is that. But those voters, those Democrat, those normal Democrat voters, I would imagine, were still voting in the gubernatorial primary. Um, when I totaled up the ballot, not the turnout. ballot, the tur turnout, the numbers as of 95%. Right. Yep. Um, the Democrat candidates for governor got 120,849 votes okay. between them. The Republican candidates got 133,701. Mm. So that's 13. Red wave. Right, that's all. Oh, well, I, that, I was like, okay, so that's like 13,000 more people took a Republican ballot than a Democrat ballot. So I was like, huh. So it'll be interesting once next week to look at how many Republicans and how many Democrats voted and how many, you know, like. Uh, it would be interesting to see the independents because right. we do know that that is a game that yes. is well, but played I mean, and I thought, the scenes. And I would say normally, but then I thought about it. I'm like, I don't think the game was there because if you pulled a ballot to screw with Lily, then you couldn't vote for Joyce or Cindy. Like the governor's race on both, t both parties was significant, I think. So that's the, that's the total, because that's a statewide. So then if you go to CD1, um, Democrats, Chris Pappas and the other guy got 55,948 votes. The combined Republican votes were 64,409. Okay. And I'm like, okay, so there's 9,000. We're a very similar number. There's a 9,000 yeah. vote difference, right? Now, not a plus on Lily's end, the Democrats got in CD2, 65,095 votes. Lil, the Republicans, 59,279. And I was like, ooh. So, yes, right? So, but it's not surprising, though, because CD2 ooh. does tend to be more, more Democrat-leaning because the western part of our state is more Democrat-leaning. What was the race in CD2 <laughs> on the Democrat side? There 65. Was, right, but who was in it? Maggie Goodlander and Colin Van Ostrom. So I think that doesn't that indicate that they were pulling ballots from independents? Like maybe like you send all I don't the know. union people to it's like just independent union people to go pull in the X I races. Think one thing I think it does say is that there is no Democratic sweep happening. There is no, no there is, New Hampshire is in play. Let's go with New that. I think New Hampshire is definitely um, in play. I think Did you watch be, the debate at all? We only have a couple minutes, I, but did I, you watch I, the debate at all? So I did not watch it, but, but my takeaway on X was uh, Trump did not do great. Um, so now, uh, going into it, they totally set it up that I think as long as Kamala didn't look like a senile person, they were going to say she did great. Right. You know, her bar was at the floor. Sure. Um, Trump did not do terrible, I don't think. Like, I, I'm trying to be objective. He didn't do a terrible. He didn't, he didn't make her look as bad as I think he could have. He, you know, he does tend to go off in the weeds and talk. That's just his way he is. Um, but I don't think he said or did anything terrible by any means, right? He was, he did, he did tell her to be quiet more than once because he goes, how's that sound? Does that sound familiar? Because they told, always told him to be quiet because she kept interrupting. Right. Um, Kamala, on the other hand, they had prepped her for five days in a hotel with a Donald Trump lookalike. Um, <laughs> oh, wow. they obviously made her memorize what her policy positions were and then told her to just keep repeating these ones. And she's got this bizarre, like when I travel around the country talking to voters, I'm like, honey, you don't travel. We, this is a part of the discussion that you're nowhere's to be found. Right. So you're lying. <laughs> um, she said a lot of weird things that um, Dan was watching and he said the fact checkers were saying that's not, ac that's actually not accurate. Oh, oh, and that's not accurate. Um, but the weirdest thing, and Dan noticed it the first time, and then she did it again. You could tell when he was here getting to her, she at one point turned and goes, she was like, Dan goes, what is with that thing? What is she doing? Why is that pose? And then she stopped and went on. And then another time when you could tell he was getting to her, and Dan goes, oh, that's like, that's, I said, yeah, you can, you know, you can, she can't hide her emotions very well. Um, so she did, she didn't flop. 
But that, by, by no means, I don't know if the needle moved at all in either direction. Look, I'm not sure anyone's watching a debate and kind of immediately like going, oh, yeah. wow, you yeah. said something about a policy that has fundamentally she changed my she, mind. She, I mean, the things that change people's minds is when you see Biden get up there and you're like, oh, oh Grandpa yeah. is senile. So Maybe the one thing that Dan laughed because he's country. like, oh, my God. So one of the things that has been debunked very extensively is Trump never said that white supremacists were good people. Like he never... It has been debunked. He he had a sentence, and if you chop it, the sentence at a certain point and don't have the rest of the sentence, you could twist it to say that that's mean. But everybody has, that has looked at it on all ends of the media has said, yeah, that's not what he said. They don't care about and, the truth. But she said it. She, yeah. Even though it's de it's like the, one of the ones that like you're not supposed to use anymore because it's not real, she they, continues oh, to when say the it. Government spreads mal information. It's all good. It's yeah, just politics. So, We're allowed to um, lie, but you're not. I that is the rule. The guys. thing that I, I've seen elsewhere, and I got to find a clip and just get the numbers and make some things. And I hope that some people harp on it. I was um, McEnany. What is it? Kelly McEnany? I can never. Kaylee McEnany? Whatever her name is. She's on Fox, I think, and she worked for Trump. She. Um, she had a thing the other day and she goes, here's the reality. She, she has said she's going to tax unrealized gains, <laughs> which everybody thinks is insane. But then the Democrats don't believe that she said that that's part of her policy. So there's a problem. Um, then she keeps saying she's going to repeal the Trump tax cuts because they only benefited the wealthy. And Kaylee or whatever her name is said, yeah, here's the real number. The people making between fifty and $50,000 a year got like 18% reduction in their taxes at the bottom of the range. And then the people 50 to, you know, 150 also got 17%. She goes, so when we're talking about who the tax cut benefited, it wasn't the wealthy. And if you talk to people who um, own businesses or whatever, there were so many things repealed in that those little tax hole loops, you're, you no longer can deduct your property taxes. You can no longer deduct your mortgage interest, all those things. That's where the rich were benefiting the most because if you own two homes, you could deduct all these taxes and all this mortgage interest and all this stuff. That went away. Well, the lower end of the economic group, they weren't benefiting from them at all. They were taking the standard deduction. Right. So they're lying to you. The Democrats are lying. I know that's, a, that's like a crazy revelation, but it's true. Well, I think everyone is twisting the truth. Well, <laughs> but be that as it may, um, we're through the primaries. Yep. Now it is, I believe, 55 or 54 days until yep. the actual elections yep. on the 5th of November. Yep. Uh, start getting out there, reach yep. out read, to your candidates. Yep. Do um, your own research. Read up on what people stand for and whether you like, you know, this guy or that guy. I mean, I think the bottom line is, like, if you're just, if you don't care or you're just like whatever, I think the fair division is to say, if you want less government, more prosperity, maybe be a little less poor and not have to die every time you go to the grocery store, vote red, vote Republican. Yep. If you want more communism, more control over your life, people telling you what to do, what to inject, what to, uh, what school Everything. to go to, what to eat, all of that, then, you know, maybe the blues are for you. But in the end, it's gang warfare. So red or blue, take your pick. I'm on side red. I'm on side red. Peace out. Bye.